Barbie Ferreira, and I'm gonna teach you how to behave. Which is sort of a joke in itself, but... I'm the least behaved woman in New York State. I would say Tri-State, but Jersey is a whole nother ball game. Trust, I live there. <laughs> Since I started modeling, I've spent quite a bit of my life in a makeup chair, transforming myself into whatever someone else's perception of what I'm supposed to be that day is. Powder, contour, moisturize, highlight, conceal, accentuate. Why are women expected to do all of this? Traditionally, makeup was thought of as a way to help women snag a husband. <laughs> but is it really that simple anymore? So I'm on my way to meet some people who think about makeup in a different way, as a tool for art, performance, and to realize their true authentic selves. I know that I like makeup, and a lot of people do, and it's their way of expressing themselves, but does that make us bad feminists? First up, synchronized swimmers. On the surface, these ladies are like the ultimate in old-fashioned femininity. I mean, they wear a full face of makeup underwater. They are smiling at all times, even underwater. To me, that makes the sport seem harder, not easier than other sports. It feels like these swimmers get a bad rap for appearing so feminine, when the reality is, those were some bad-ass bitches. So, a lot of sports don't wear makeup or it's mm -hmm. not like traditional to wear makeup. So why is it that synchronized swimming, especially when it's in a, it's a water sport, why do you guys wear makeup? Part of our score is an artistic score. We have to wear makeup so that the judges can see our expression. And just like actors on a stage, the audience needs to see their expression. Similarly, in synchro, you need to have a judge be able to read what your expression is. Do you consider synchronized swimming feminist? I consider everything I do feminist because I think everything that I do advances what the opinion of women should be. However, I love participating in synchronized swimming because anyone can do it. It's funny how makeup can alter not just your appearance, but also people's perception of you. Is it possible to feel the need to wear makeup and still be feminist? To get right to the source, I'm going to do what every millennial does, or Gen Z. I'm going to go to the internet. So I asked Twitter, general question, do you wear makeup? Why or why not? How is it empowering or disempowering to you personally? Because I feel like everyone has their own personal paths on makeup. So I'm gonna let this uh, fester in here and I'm gonna come back to it. So now we're gonna meet Goldie Peacock. So Goldie is a performance artist who performs in drag as a drag king. They are gonna teach me exactly what goes into that. Goldie was assigned female at birth, and now they identify as non-binary. As a good host does, I'm gonna get a little makeover. Hello, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm great. So, what is a drag king? So, a drag king is an entertainer who assumes a theatrical guise of maleness in and for performance. So personally, what does portraying masculinity in your art mean to you? When I'm in drag, I feel very powerful and like I own everything. My shoulders are squared and I'm ready to take on the world. So what's your best guess as to what my drag persona would be? I could really see you being a douchebag. I love being a douchebag. Good. So we're gonna... Build a douche, a drag douche. Let's build a drag douche. I'm so excited. <laughs> what is the suggestion for a drag douche look on me? We're, we're gonna contour your cheekbones. We could possibly do stubble. Stubble says douche. I also have some fake mustaches that we could paste on that are really extreme. One of those like handlebar mustache douche moments where it's like everyone- I have and, one. I, I, I want to see that, I don't know. I'm every guy you ever dated. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh my oh. 
my god. I look like I play the bass in a band. <laughs> Every band ever. Every band. Hey, my name's Doug. Welcome to my Vice show where we eat weed gummies and we review them every day <laughs> on Vice Land, 8 30 p.m. to 8 45 p.m. Being a drag douche, you care about yourself more than anyone else and you own everything. And then just like act like I'm the most entitled douche in the world. Yeah. It was like every douchebag I know, I'm gonna embody them. Exactly, that's what drag is. I love that. So earlier today, I actually asked people, just a general question, do you wear makeup? Why or why not? How is it empowering or disempowering to you personally? So sad mean boy, I rarely wear makeup because it makes me anxious about my appearance when it doesn't work out the way I want it to. I feel better not wearing it, but I don't feel disempowered one way or another. Interesting. This is an example of how a culture of makeup connoisseurs who say that makeup needs to be this particular way and then people feel anxious if they can't measure up to that standard. In reality, makeup is just paint on your literal face. <laughs> yes, makeup is just paint on the face. That's it. People think that makeup is just to attract suitors, but in fact it's used for a ton of different things, whether it be art or just your own expression of yourself, and it can't be put into a box. Okay, so you can put it into a literal box, fine. But what I'm saying is there's no point in making a moral judgment. You can wear makeup and still smash the patriarchy. Slay. <laughs>